Good evening. Today is July 18th, 2022. This is MUD 1 Board of Directors regular meeting for uh, Municipal Utility District number one. I uh, call to order and announce we have a quorum. Everyone is present. And Tony, our attorney, is on uh, call in. Citizens comment. <clears throat> this is an opportunity for the citizens to address the board on any matter. Kevin, will you call the time, please? Time is 6.30. We'll call it one now. Thank you very much, Alan. Keep me honest there. Okay, this is an opportunity for citizens to address the board on any matter, whether or not it's posted on the agenda. The board is not permitted to take action on or discuss any comments made to the board at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The board will hear comments on specific agenda items prior to the board addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or the time limit determined by the president or presiding officer. To speak during this item, you must complete the speaker's form that includes the topic, topics of your statement. Citizen comments should be limited to matters over which the board has authority. Do we have anybody to sign up? No, sir. Thank you very much, Lord. <coughs> Moving on, reports and updates. One, staff reports on A, capital improvement projects, B, water operations reports, C, wastewater system reports, and D, finance report. Alan? Good evening, directors. Uh, a few capital improvement project updates for you. The Waterline Interconnect project, uh, they have not laid any more uh, line this month. Uh, they've been working on testing a portion of line from the town center to the apartments. Uh, they had all the uh, a few minor issues that they had found when they were pressure testing that line, but those corrections have been made. Uh, they've uh, chlorinated that line and it is put in service as of last Friday. Uh, paving, currently they're paving behind the section of the uh, vineyard department, so that's been taking up the majority of their staff time. Uh, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but they do have intention of trying to start and lay some more pipe. Correct, hopefully by tomorrow. Okay, very good. Also, the water line, our annual water line project. Uh, the folks on Creek Courts, from Crooked Creek Court to Oakmont Drive, they've uh, been established on temporary water. The contractor has started replacing some of that pipe over there. Last week is roughly 140 feet. So with the, what they did today, maybe closer to 200. <clears throat> uh, they're also testing the temporary water line on Wilshire Drive and uh, should be starting that replacement next week. That way they can do both locations simultaneously and try to get this project wrapped up fairly quick. Lift Station 1, we've had little movement on that. The, the uh, contractor is temporary fencing installed. Uh, they've been working on some issues with our existing generator because essentially what they're going to do is take it, relocate it, and use it. But um, they're waiting until we have all of our issues fixed with it. Uh, they've been on site doing some potholing of the existing wet well and some of the piping. Uh, so they haven't really made much movement on that. Hopefully we'll see some over this next month. The South Lake Emergency Connection. Um, roughly two weeks ago, I heard from our consultant that South Lake had originally stated that they wanted it to be or preferred it to be a two-way connection. Hydraulically, it makes more sense for the district than it does for South Lake. And communications this far is that they would likely just make it a one-way fee to the district. So that would essentially save us some cost. However, um, their engineering staff had made a comment that they prefer to wait until their upcoming water modeling is completed. So that could be summer to late summer next year. Not all is lost yet. I have our consultants reaching out to see if we can get some sort of verbal language to at least continue this process. But um, if not, We'll just have to wait for now until we can get any comments from them. The Junction Way project, we do have a pre-construction meeting set uh, beginning of August, so hopefully uh, our contractor can get started on that concrete uh, installation project. And another thing uh, from a operational perspective, the annual wastewater analysis, we got the uh, final report back in uh, from that uh, consultant last week, and I'm pleased to say that they're Estimated repair costs that they found are roughly 250000 However, just doing some brief uh, looking into their recommendations, 
there are a lot of things that staff can likely repair themselves in-house. Uh, so we're going to try to do our best to budget those necessary repairs. A lot of it is, I think it's eight to 10 point repairs that they found. And there's a significant amount of manholes that need to be lined or rehabbed as well. But other than that, nothing significant. Uh, the system looks fairly good and, I, and I'm pleased with that report. Uh, I don't have anything else as far as capital improvements, but if y'all have any questions on anything else, we'd be happy to answer. I just want to make a, a side note that there was a break on uh, Pebble Beach, was it? And yes, sir. Trophy Wood? Yes, sir. And, I mean, it's not exactly, uh, you know, spring weather out there, and those guys are out there, you know, busting their butt, basically. And I know we have an employee fund, is that correct? Say again? Like a just employee luncheon type deal? We have employee relations, is, yes. Is it possible to have a luncheon for... I mean, it's not just those guys. Anybody that's worked outside the, right now, sure. I mean, it could be showing appreciation. Sure, we can definitely do that. Does anyone have any problem with that? No. <coughs> okay. Yeah, because it is not cool out there. No. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy hot. Uh, Steven, do you have anything on the finance side? Dad? No. Got nothing. Oh, I was nothing. good. Okay. <laughs> Got it. The budget's on the agenda. He'll have his hands full yeah. tonight. Okay, we're moving on to consent agenda. All matters listed as consent agenda are considered to be routine by the Board of Directors and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be moved from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. It, it, uh, consider number two, consider an act to approve the consent agenda, A, June 2022, combined financials, June 2022, regular meeting minutes. C, quarterly investment report, third quarter, fiscal year 2022. And D, the tax collection report, third quarter, fiscal year 2022. Uh, do I have a motion for those? Or does someone want to remove one? Or two, or all of them? Anyone have a motion? I'll move to approve items A through D of the consent agenda. Okay, I have a motion by Director Rose to- Go for seconds. A second. I have a motion by Director Rose to approve uh, 2A, B, C, and D. And I have a second by Secretary Treasurer Harper. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. <coughs> okay, we're moving into regular session. Agenda item number three, receive update from strategic, uh, strategic Partnership Committee. That's why I want, I'm all in favor of Tracy changing her name. It's a tongue twister. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is actually, just for FYI, we did uh, talk about last uh, month to change it to Strategic uh, Committee. Does Correct. everyone remember that? Yes. In general okay. discussion. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we have an update. Do you want to? Give it or uh, there's nothing much. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, we had planned on uh, meeting <coughs> earlier today uh, with uh, our town partners, and uh, all members uh, were not able to attend. So the meeting has been postponed, and I think Alan is working with the uh, town manager to uh, pick a date that's appropriate for all members uh, to attend. Yes, sir, currently it's September 20th before our next regular scheduled board meeting. That was the soonest date that lined up with the board meeting so Tony could be here in person ahead of that regular scheduled board meeting. Have you run that by the town already? I, I notified uh, the town manager last week and then I sent them an email as follow-up today. And at that time they're gonna bring numbers or a proposal or of some sort i have notified him of y'all's desires and what y'all are looking for as far as their plan of action okay does anyone have anything to add to that or i, I have a question can um, you pull the mic down i'm so sorry is that better kevin <laughs> no <laughs> pull it even closer to you if you want you can lift it up and move it we're good we're good um why does tony need to be present um I feel with the uptick in, in COVID cases and this new variant that's out there, that we could move this, or potentially move this meeting forward closer 
before September um, and have him attend um, virtually as Tony is now. I, I mean, <coughs> I don't see a reason to push this until September. I understand. Uh, ben, do you want to? Yeah, I'll, I'll address it. Uh, the town has had an attorney working on, on uh, this project, I think since um, late last year. And uh, we felt that uh, having the two attorneys in the same place at the same time during the, the subcommittee or, or strategic uh, committee meeting uh, and then the follow-on executive session that we would have where everybody was updated uh, was important. Uh, we want the two attorneys to be face-to-face -face and, and in proximity with each other when this discussion. It's a very important discussion. Mm -hmm. A lot of assets uh, in the balance. And, and that was the main reason. And, and Tony, your, your schedule is completely booked until September? No. Um, I think originally it was supposed to be today, and the town had some conflicts and we were unable to, to make that meeting. I, my understanding is that that desire was to make it coincide with one of your board meetings, uh, under which I would be there already. I do have a August meeting date because I'll, I'll be out of state and, and on a family vacation that week. But any other date um, that would likely be available, uh, except for that vacation, um, obviously the normal um, scheduling issues. But um, it's all a function of whether you want it to be a coincide with one of your regular meeting dates or not, and then we just have to make the, see if the town's available for whatever dates are selected. In our, in our prior discussion, it was the board's desire to try to schedule when Tony was already going to be heading to town, and so essentially that's what led us to scheduling on the same day as a regular board meeting. Let's say, okay, so my next question is, um, how much would we save by Tony attending virtually? Tony would be attending the board meeting at home anyway. So. But to answer your question, uh, for my travel time, it's a 50% rate, and it's a trip to and back from Dallas at that 50% rate, so whatever the, the traffic is, is a function of that. but. You would save the cost of that travel. Okay. I, uh, I, I concur with the desire to have the attorney present for the presentation. I think it's very important uh, to be here for a face to face meeting in this instance. Uh, and so okay. I, I support that position. Yeah, I, I talked to Ben about it when. We we're having meeting conflicts, and I fully agree on his stand. Um, it's too important of an issue yep. to have someone call in and have, you know, not that Zoom is bad or whatever we use, but still, it's better if a person is there that you can go off and talk to them, you know, if there's a problem. So um, it's too big of an issue right now. And from what I understand, I haven't. I talked to Jeff Beach, and he wasn't aware of any firm numbers on what's going on. So that just gives them more time to put a proposal together to present to us. <coughs> Anything else? Uh, yes. Can I speak to this? Sure. Just state your name and your address. Council, uh, board, Steve Flynn, 417 Ramsey Trail. So just to kind of support um, exactly what, Tracy, your question was, I think the last communication from uh, to Alan from Wade was we're certainly, um, well, two options. One, do we want to consider meeting without attorneys? And, you know, from hearing you very clearly, that's not the best option. Mm -hmm. Understood that. But I think his second point was, <coughs> hey, we're willing to meet, you know, schedules permitting any time before September's. Can we not look at schedules? Um, you know, his, your attorney, our attorney, the two subcommittee members on each side. So I just wanted to clarify that we're certainly open to that. Tracy, to your point, I mean, September, that's two months away. 
if that's the best we can do, okay. But um, you know, looking at schedules sometime in August, uh, we would certainly support that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Anybody have anything else? I do. Okay. Um, I understand that the town's water attorney has been, I think the water attorney, yes? It, it, attorney, yes. It, it has been looking into this. <coughs> I don't know to what extent. Um, and, and I'm a little confused how the town can come back to us with a proposal and, and what I'm thinking is, you know, the two subcommittees have a kickoff meeting. It can be virtual to start and, and start the discussion instead of pushing it off for two months. I, I understand the in-person um, aspect of this, but I, to have a kickoff meeting, I, I don't understand how the town can come to us with a proposal when there has not been a kickoff meeting between the two subcommittees, okay. if that <coughs> makes sense. Um, I, I'd like to okay. uh, make a, a comment about that. Um, we found out that there was a water attorney working for the town about March. Uh, the, the district had not been in, in invited into uh, any work or negotiation with Westlake. And, uh, <coughs> and at that time I had a discussion with uh, one of the elected officials and he indicated that uh, in July, uh, ideally, uh, they'd like to have a meeting where an <coughs> A to Z uh, a work product would be presented, uh, and that would include <laughs> all of the work that was done with Westlake, uh, numbers that uh, had been generated, uh, um, and I understand that uh, a preliminary offer for purchasing the district's assets uh, had been uh, worked up. We were looking forward to all of that happening today at four o'clock. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Carroll was unable to uh, attend and I think uh, it's an important enough thing where, where both entities should be present, but a lot of work's been done on this, and we expected to see uh, a a proposal or or at least a work product uh, that uh, was pretty complete in terms of numbers, uh, operational considerations, uh, HR considerations, and uh, uh, other other variables. Well, I guess my next comment to that is. is if the subcommittee is feeling that there are, if there has been extensive workups produced, um, why, um, w why can't they send it over to the subcommittee for review, and then we can, you know, follow up with a meeting, whether it's virtual beforehand. Um, that way, we're the, the ball is rolling. I, I, I don't I <coughs> don't see an issue in that. I agree with that. That you know, bring send it to us. Tell us what you have. And no one has anything. Alan, have you gotten anything? No, sir. Okay. So, I mean, the first person to contact would be Alan to to give it to the subcommittee. This is be the subcommittee was just set up last week. That uh, the whose subcommittee? Not ours. Last month. It was last month. month. I know. Last month. Yeah. Anyways, so they've had an attorney on board for at least six months. I mean, wouldn't you think that the MUD would be involved when this plan came up to go over to Westlake and propose, you know, to see if Westlake could be dissolved from the MUD? Which goes back to my point, you know, why wait two months if something <coughs> has been, if something, there is some type of documentation that can be produced why not send it over to 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 review? I fully agree. And if, if they had that. documentation, you would think that today's meeting, which we agreed last month, that we would have a meeting and an exchange.
which has been uh, stated already. Why wouldn't we get that meeting, that information? And I guess Steve could tell us he's the subcommittee of the town council, is that correct? That, that's correct. So okay. there's two of us, as you guys know, Jeff Beach and do myself. Do you have any information? I do not have any information. And I think that's, it's the, we're, we're talking about a communication issue here. From my perspective, as a member of the subcommittee, I think we need to get together the first meeting and talk very high level. I mean, we're talking about a very big issue that's been going on for a long time, for years. And to me, as a member of the subcommittee, speaking of one, not speaking on behalf of council, I think the subcommittees need to get together and talk about what is it we're trying to accomplish. And not only that, but what are, you know, what might be the roadblocks? Is it even feasible? Is it possible? I think there's a perception from what I'm hearing that the town subcommittee is a lot further down the track than is happened. We haven't had a meeting at all, the subcommittee. The only meeting we've ever had was the one we're trying to do today, and of course we know what happened there. So the subcommittee of the town hasn't met. We haven't met with council other than to develop the group. So that's kind of where we're at, and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, both groups, so that there's not an expectation that whenever this meeting is, next week, next month, September, that there's an expectation from the group here that a proposal, quote unquote, is gonna be brought forth. <coughs> it doesn't exist today, to, to my knowledge, and so if that's the expectation, we should be talking about that, about okay. exactly uh, uh, what it is we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I don't, I don't wanna, because you're, you, there's another partner of the subcommittee and I don't want to get in, get you in trouble by any means. But the whole thing, you haven't. E you just acknowledged you haven't even had a meeting, other than being elected or appointed to the subcommittee. They've had a water attorney for at least six or seven months, and they went. They have. They, as being the town manager, have gone to Westlake and talked about okay depreciation expenses and things of that nature. So someone has numbers. Westlake's given someone you know, what they're willing to come up with, but the MUD was just contacted, you know, probably in March, I think, we found out that, okay, all this is going on, so it sounds like the town took the initiative six or seven months ago to approach Westlake instead of coming to the MUD and say, let's get together like you're talking about, mm -hmm. come up with a proposal, and then go visit Westlake. It seems like the cart was put before the horse, uh, you know. I, and I, Kevin, I wasn't part of that, so I'm not, I'm not saying it did or didn't happen, what yeah, I'm that's suggesting that's is, it, it's happened. Wh yeah. What I'm suggesting is we need to get together as the subcommittee and just talk high level. We're getting way down here when, in my view, we need to start talking about is it feasible? What are we trying to accomplish? Does it make sense? And then if we can agree on a plan forward, then turn it over to the general managers and let them do the heavy lifting. Because we're talking, you, you mentioned, and, and Tracy had mentioned too, you know, bringing numbers. Well, what, what does that mean? There's a lot of different numbers to be thinking about and considering. There's a, a bunch of them, right? So, you know, Westlake is one part of it. There's all kinds of other stuff. In my view, we're not close to that yet. So let's sit down as the group and say, what do we want to accomplish? I just want to remind you that this isn't the first time it came up. It came up in like 2014 or 15 in the CAC committee. So, and their report is, I'm sure you have it or have seen mm -hmm. it. So they have numbers there where you can start a base from it. Whatever is best for the citizens um, or the, our customers, I mean, that's what we would listen to. But, um, you know, I, I, to be honest, I'm a little confused. Like, okay, what did the mud do? Are we charging too much for water? Are we charging too much for wastewater? Are we charging too much for taxes where it's only like three cents or something? So what, spa what started this or what initiated uh, the town going over to Westlake and starting with them? Well, well and again, again, Kevin, I, 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 I can't not. address that, but what yeah. I can say, okay? Mm -hmm. Th this is no new news here. This issue, as you well know, and Bill knows, and everybody has been around, has been talked about for years. We haven't gotten anywhere, right? You were even part of well, probably we, those. Well, we did get somewhere. We found out that right now 
or at that time it wasn't financial for nine financially uh positive for the residents or the customers right so without i mean i don't want to get you in trouble again for spe one person speaking and this was just an update tracy i think got your answer they don't have anything from what i heard as far as numbers so uh, hopefully in september when everyone can be available we have at least your initial numbers or what you're looking for why was the uh i guess this opening of town going to westlake westlake didn't come to us yeah. in the past it was uh, all westlake i would suggest and, we're, and i'm probably t taking way too much of your time yes. is if there's an expectation <coughs> on the part of this count on this board and the subcommittee for quote unquote numbers then i would ask alan to get with Wade and be very specific about what is it you're going to be looking for? What specifically, I mean, this just to say numbers, I'm, I don't know what that means exactly. So I don't want to, to Tracy's point, have two months go by and then September and we get in the room saying, well, that's not what we wanted or that's not enough or there's enough detail. If we have two months, let's do the legwork about what it is we're looking to do. I'm going to end it on this where Obviously, the town thinks the numbers or something is positive that they opened the door to Westlake because it was, uh, I met with two house reps, uh, Tam Parker and Gio Capriglione, and they left it in Westlake's hand at our last meeting to say, okay, you need to come up with a reasonable offer because they were only offering pennies on the dollar at that time. And they didn't do anything except go to uh, Austin and file a petition against our water renewal license. So. Well, I again, I, I've probably spoken way, yeah. way too much past the time. Yeah. Okay. But I, I would just say one last thing, Kevin, as I said before. You keep bringing up Westlake, and that's a, that's a piece of it, a big piece of it. But that's not the only piece. There's 27 pieces to this, right? And so getting the group together to sit down and say, <laughs> is it even feasible? And if it's worth the discussion, then let's get the right people involved to continue that. That's my yeah. point. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin. Sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Rose. Uh, the, only, the only input in the, in the initiation of this uh, issue that I was involved in was at a uh, prior meeting of the partnership committee and that the town manager asked specifically if we would be, we, the MUD, would be interested in a presentation from their uh, water attorney. And that was... That was the input. Okay. So if Thank that, you. If that frames any expectations, <coughs> that was the input. Okay. So I, I have one more question. So I, is, there, is there a possibility where the two subcommittees could sit down together prior to this September meeting and, and, and lay out a preliminary plan of sorts a timeline, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw out six months and use that as an example. You know, over the six months, let's accomplish this, this, this. If, if you reach a point where, okay, it's, this is going to be dead in the water, I mean, why, why can't, you know, a, a prelim preliminary meeting for just the two subcommittees get together and, and outline a plan? Again, we're not a part of the planning process. The town initiated this six or seven months ago. Uh, my question is, what is your plan? You had to have one to go over and talk to Westlake, right? Uh, that's the part I think we need to get past, is the two subcommittees sit down together, <coughs> get past where whatever happened, I don't know for sure, I'm not 100%, um, and, and the two subcommittees outline a plan instead of waiting until December and hopefully some numbers show up where the attorneys are there. I mean, I, I don't see an issue with that to outline some sort of prelim preliminary plan. I don't, I don't see a reason for a plan until you see the presentation. After you've seen the presentation, then you can start asking questions and, see, and then figure out if you want a plan for moving forward or what you're going to do with it. Okay, so I'm going to move on. I'm yeah, okay. But no, I. Yeah. Point taken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's it. Do you have any more for me? I don't. Doug? Tracy? No. Okay. Alan? You want to comment on this? I just want to make sure that the board remembers you appointed uh, Mr.
Mr. Carr and Mr. Brewster to the strategic committee for uh, coming up with this meeting date. Are there any changes or do we still move forward as I mean, I, provided I'm by you two gentlemen? I, I, I believe that the uh, committee should handle their own pacing. What was that? I believe the committee should handle the pacing. I don't believe the pacing should be driven at this point from the board. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Brewster. With I think Tony should be present. Um, I don't. I mean, we want to try and move it along as fast as possible. So, um, whatever's talked about can be run by Tony. Why talk about things that aren't possible? That's my sense on it. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, my computer went into sleep. It was so long. Okay, uh, number four, receive update from budget committee. Uh, Mr. Brewster and Mr. Harper. Try and top that last one. Okay. For you, sir. <laughs> well, we did, <coughs> we did have our uh, first uh, budget meeting. Uh, it, uh, it went for five and a half consecutive hours, and I took um, a huge drink out of a high-pressure fire hose on that. But uh, the, the net of where we're at at this point is we want to focus on uh, some, some uh, critical uh, water pump replacements. Um, uh, we want to focus on uh, 111,000 lineal feet of line replacement that's been talked about for quite some time. Uh, we compressed <coughs> the the period of replacement to 20 years with the objective of not having to um, uh, uh, go, to, go to a bond. We thought that we could do it with, uh, with uh, revenue collections. Uh, am I on the, on the point there? Okay. And, and, uh, and I think the documentation that talks about this up to this point has a 40-year plan, and as I said, we compressed that to <coughs> 20 years. We looked at doing it all out in five years or 10 years, and uh, the, ne the ne necessity for, for bonds and uh, tax increases uh, was, uh, was too great. We, we can, however, uh, do we think we can do this with uh, with 20 years? Staff is working on uh, variations of that. We have a, a three and a half percent compound uh, uh, <coughs> increase in costs plugged into the pro forma model. Uh, I think that's uh, light and and going to have to be uh, increased. Uh, possibly not. I, I but we'll see by the time we get to the um, the second and final uh, planning session, and then we'll we'll bring it to the board. Uh, and then we uh, we plugged in some money for education. Um, conservation is a big topic, and especially during this uh, this heat wave, uh, radio and TV. Uh, we we would like uh, to have the community. Uh, we're talking about all of our customers understand and, and possibly kids. This could, could affect uh, uh, school programs, education programs. But we'd like to have them understand um, the state-of-the-art moves and, and uh, that the district has made over the last several years. We'd like to have uh, conversations about uh, conservation and uh, and how the system works. Um, I was recently um, I recently attended the uh, Association for Water Board Director. It was a three day thing in downtown Fort Worth, so it was handy and cost effective. Uh, but there are uh, education programs being used where uh, kids understand that when they take mom's car keys and flush them down the toilet, uh, they, they, they know <laughs> how it operates and where it's <laughs> all going. Um, so we wanna, we wanna plug some money in for uh, education and uh, uh, bringing the community up to speed on what the district is all about. 
those are the, the three things that, uh, that I had, Doug. Uh, yeah, I, don't <coughs> I really don't have much more than that. I mean, it was like drinking water from a, from a full-blown fire hydrant. And, um, <laughs> and, and Steve's been great at filling in, filling in some of the blanks. I was interested in especially um, a bond repayment program and if that could be accelerated. And um, uh, so we're, s we're working on that, that point. And I, I agree with, with uh, Ben that the education um, of the community as to um, where we get our water, where it goes, what it costs, um, uh, sort of a marketing program uh, that I think a lot of people would be interested in. And um, I don't know if we send that out in a flyer with their bill or something, but we, we did talk about something like that, but increasing the, um, uh, the marketing budget a little bit. Um, um, we need to talk about that. That's really about all I have. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Okay, we're going to move Evan. on to Evan. Oh, I keep just say something. Yeah, I did. I uh, lightly, right lightly. Okay. I, I, I understand. Okay, it's, yeah, go it's, ahead. it's what's then left. Yeah. Okay, so I did my standard thing. So <coughs> either take a drink or put your seatbelt on, whichever the case. I did my standard thing with budgets, went through it, uh, looked at it in detail. Um, and uh, some significant things that I find is one, property values uh, have gone up 17.1%. Uh, that has an impact as things flow, th flow through toward tax rates. Uh, I have a question for Stephen on page 55 of the packet. Is the, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I think I ask you this every year and keep forgetting the answer, but in the in the middle there, under m and tax surcharge rate, required revenue, you've got 116,000 and a 100,000. That 100,000, is that for the PID? That's correct. Okay. Give That's the only share that they are associated with. Yeah. Uh, the fire department fund information on page, starts on page 56. Is that input from the town? Is so that the town's input? This is, is the town's input as of that time. Today, I just received an updated budget that slightly varied a little bit. Uh, but at the time, at 6.30, this was the updated budget I had for them. Okay. I have a comment on that one, the same one that I'll have on ours. But looking at the salary, it shows a 2.49% increase change. Correct. I don't know whether they have some loss in FTEs or exactly what's going on over there. But I know that the CPI has taken a uh, significant increase. I've seen that for those of us who are drawing on our social securities, we can expect a uh, 10 to 11% increase. Uh, in our check, I, uh, I'll address that list a little bit further when I get to the MUDS equation. So yeah, I can talk a little bit on that for you. Kay. It is actually an increase in one FTE. <coughs> uh, there is a 5% raise built into it. Uh, as far as my understanding, that is what has been taken to the town on both the fire and the town side. Uh, but there's also an offset of revenue, and this is what I was told from Mike. I'll get more clarification, but there's about $2,500 from ARPA per employee for the fire side, which is offsetting the increase. Okay. So it's an ARPA fund coming in that's offsetting the increase. That's correct. Got it. Thanks. Uh, we don't have that benefit, I'm sure. I see also that they're increasing their s merits, their salary merits, uh, significantly. That's close to tripling it, uh, which is a question in and of itself. <coughs> fire, fire safety equipment <coughs> looks like it's uh, gone up. Uh, it's more, I don't know whether we're 
that's basically bunker gear and other equipment. That's correct. That's the so I was told both EMS and the fire side have both increased quite a bit, uh, and that's because of the replacement of the bunker gear. Okay, because because I I remember in the past they were trying to get that, so you were doing a uh, a yearly replacement cycle as opposed to having peaks and valleys in it, and so it looks like the twenty this fiscal year had been amended to 27, or it was held at 27.7, projected at 15, which means the money wasn't spent this year, and then then they uh, back to uh, match what this year's was. So that's it a- It appears next, this next year is gonna be a peak. So that they should be caught up from there, from my understanding. Okay. Uh, on page 84. As I looked at the bottom bottom set of numbers there, FY22 and FY20, I'm sorry, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, I'm sorry 57. 57. Yeah. The difference in 84. 84, like the 84 is the calendar. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's slash 84, never mind, 57. Uh, as I looked at those numbers there and looked at the bottom line, the annual transfer payment, uh, the numbers above didn't seem to uh, work with what was below. I can explain that. So this is really a calculation for the finance side here. But I like to present all that to everybody I can see. So what you're trying to do is compare the overall fire budget versus the overall fire budget. One of the big things that happened this fiscal year is going to be, well, actually the last fiscal year, is there's no longer going to be any more payment. We paid our last payment for the fire truck. Mm -hmm. So you have 124000 plus a 3,000, so 127, is no longer a responsibility of the MUD to pay for this year. Okay. Therefore, 127,000 will now no longer be reduced for the, from the MUDS portion. So what you're seeing here is I'm backing all the MUDS portion out okay. my, and then backing out all the town's revenue and getting out what the what is left over for the MUD to pay or transfer over to the town as our responsibility of 50% of the budget. Okay. so. As I read this, it says annual transfer of the town from mud fire budget. In this fiscal year, it was 898. In this net, this coming fiscal year, it's 998. Correct. So it's going up. Correct, for two reasons. So with this number is, this is the share that we owe to the town. Yep. So we, are, we, we no longer have that extra 127 that we would back off of that number. Gotcha. Because we don't have to pay that as an expense gotcha. for us. I and see. then it offsets with their revenue also. Okay, I was trying to work that from the numbers above. And the it's really just an internal calculation to, to transfer what we what our portion would be. Yeah, yeah. I was having problems doing the uh, transfer across. Uh, in the uh, in the, our general fund, looking at the MUDS budget now, and I'm on page 58. I'm looking at sewer. Looks like we show a sewer revenue decrease. If you remember right, we just reduced rates for sewer. Okay. And if you take the same consumption right now, so Chris uh, Nugen and I are working right now, Chris is working on our rates. Okay. I do my calculation. I'm usually a little more conservative on everything. He does his calculation based on national average. We come together and we'll have actual rates okay. from there. But if you follow the trend and you use the reduction in rates that was just approved in March, then that would be the reduction in sewer. It's a reduction. Okay. But I understand the driver behind that. So, okay. Makes sense. Uh, on that same page, TCC affluent charges mm -hmm. uh, show a uh, an increase of uh, ten thousand dollars. I just wanted to comment that it seems to me that it's been a long time that we since we've looked at that agreement and that contract, and uh, I don't recall exactly how those rates are set. So. so the last rate was changed back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I've actually have Chris working on that same thing, finding out from everywhere around what the fluid charges and what it varies, but have him giving us kind of an average of what they are, and we're going to work on that too. Okay, because we'll it seems to me work. that one of the things we might consider uh, is that we tie that somehow to a percentage of our current rate structure and the rate Plan. Just a th just a thought. We, we were looking into this because if you look at from now since 2015, as you know, the biggest portion is a wastewater treatment plant expansion. Mm -hmm. It costs more now to get the fluent water. So uh, mm -hmm. we're working on that, trying to come up with a cost escalator for that. Okay, sounds good. Um, 
I'm down on prior year reserves. I see we're moving in prior prior year reserves in the amount of uh, one point, we'll call it 1.5, it's 1.48 million. Someone like to touch bases on that. I will. Uh, if you recall back in January, we had our budgeting planning mm -hmm. uh, meeting. There was a discussion about what we were going to be focusing on this next budget year. <clears throat> As part of the master plan report, uh, you all are or may or may not be aware that the, uh, we have two pumps over there that have met their useful life, and they are recommended for replacement. Staff also agrees with that, and uh, this would cover the majority of those costs. So as we went through the water main break issue that we had over off uh, end of January with State Highway 120 or 114, sorry, um, we saw some failures in our manifold system over here, which is essentially is the it, it's the heartbeat of our system. So <coughs> it's a critical of the failure, sir. It's a critical failure. It's extremely critical. We we can't exist without it. So <coughs> excuse me. Going back to the to the base model, I had our consultant come up with some preliminary numbers to help us for budgeting, and the majority of that 1.48 million is being transferred from maintenance and repair reserve funds to offset mm -hmm. the majority of the cost because I'm looking at roughly. 2.25 million with design and construction. Now, that does have uh, a certain amount of escalator over a one year period and a certain amount of contingency built in, but currently with our uh, production of and, and cost of goods and services nowadays, it's it's still still pending. We, we could come in and it could be cheaper, could be more. Yeah. Okay. We also discussed that the majority of focus was gonna be on our assets, we currently have as Mr. Brewster said, roughly 111,500 linear feet of asbestos cement pipe. That pipe has a useful life of 30 years. That, along with ductile iron, produced back in the older days. Um, essentially, that pipe has met its useful life, and it's recommended for replacement. As we talked about last year, we're going to look at our potential rate structure and how we can fund this out over the next 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, however you all decide. Um, it is recommended to try to replace those sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, it's a probability of failure, risk of failure. It, it just depends on what we can afford to do. So that's what that majority is. Again, these, these numbers have already moved a lot since we had this original meeting, so please keep that in mind. Okay, and there, there is a fund in the reserve policy that's specifically designated for something like that. Yes. So, I mean, it's, it's there, and we can talk about that at that time. Uh, Salaries and wages. I'm, I'm looking at water now. Um, and I'll touch. Uh, I'm on page, still on page 58 at the top. Shows a decrease in salaries and wages of 4.03%. Uh, so uh, I'd be interested to understand how that is. Sure, I can talk to that one. So couple things we'll start first off is removal of one FTE so it's removal of one position there is a COLA which we talked about there uh, as you mentioned the CPI we have COLA at 3.5 and then any annual step increase that is married to an employee okay COLA at 3.5 I don't think that's going to personally that's not going to be a player uh, I looked at COLA for the I think for the six years I've been on the board we've always met the regional <coughs> COLA and I don't know what that is right now, but I can tell you that my Social Security, as I mentioned before, is expected to go up 10 to 11 percent. The most critical item in the MUD structure is the employees. Okay? You can have a water line break. It takes an employee to fix it. If you have an employee break, that water line ain't going to fix anything. The employees are by far the most critical item. You maintain your employee work structure by paying them a fair salary. And that means when the CPI goes up, you meet the CPI at a minimum. We have to take care of our employees. So when I look at this, I don't know exactly what it is or where it's situated, but 3.5% from my perspective is a non-starter. So 
that's that's where I'm at on employees and salaries. Uh, they're too important. Uh, if you if you don't do that, what you wind up is a few years downstream, all of a sudden you're losing your employees. And you look around and say, why am I losing my employees? Well, it's because your salary doesn't match your neighbors. You haven't kept up with what's going around. It's a disincentive to be an employee of the district. I'm opposed to that. I, I'll take Kelleher's approach to, to, to the employees and the business any day. I look out for my employees. My employees will look out for my customers and we'll be happy. So. That's where I'm at on salaries. Uh, won't hit that one again. Uh, maintenance repairs on water looks to be going up too. Uh, is that you just anticipated wear and tear on this infrastructure? I know recently we've gone out, found some valves that are bad as we go out and test them. Somebody like a, a few of the items without going through the entire list. We have essentially broken out maintenance and repairs on the water and the wastewater side mm -hmm. where we have a supplemental list similar to how we would create one for Gadsby okay. for capital projects. So what we've done is gone out and identified our priorities, mm -hmm. need versus want. This includes the current needs based off of our staffing and our recommendations to the board. We do anticipate some of these going down next year, but we've identified a few critical valves up here in the uh, uh, plant itself and also some pump control valves. You can't operate those without them. We've already had one fail this year. We've got another one that's giving us problems. So we'd like to go ahead and budget for those items. This uh, also includes leak detection. Okay. Leak detection is another proactive measure that I'd like to implement so we can go out <coughs> and hopefully identify and find the leaks and, and, sure. and breaks, correct them ahead of time, and obtain quotes, try to do our best efforts to um, maximize water and conserving the water and, and finding those leaks and then not waiting until they fail. Okay, so this would be an output from our asset management plan? Uh, essentially, no, this would be a maintenance and repair because okay. the items that we're replacing are essentially maintenance and repair okay. items. Okay. Uh, I solely left the capital money for things that we're removing, replacing, making whole or brand new again. Okay. Electricity. <coughs> 78% increase. I can talk to this one. <clears throat> so as we know, we, we, we mentioned this before, is this is the last of our five years for our electric uh, provider that we have right now and currently for our contract. Rates are completely different than they were five years ago. Uh, if you remember, if we on the board there back in 2018, right? 2017 when we did this, um, we actually got out of the contract early because we had a chance to even reduce our rates even lower at that yes. time. Uh, because it benefited the district. Right now, we're trying to hold as long as we can to get true rates. Uh, this is moving constantly. Uh, the rate market is, is going up and down, uh, mostly up, but we're seeing a heavy increase in rates across the board as in the market. Uh, we have uh, rates being compared right now, other vendors uh, with our broker, and so we're trying to find the best rate. We are gonna bring this to the board on this next meeting. Uh, with a rate and then a timeline that we can look at either doing a short-term contract or a longer term. Uh, naturally, the longer term you do, the cheaper it's going to be. I went ahead and plugged in the shorter term on here just to have enough in there. I am looking at needing to reduce this down to roughly about 60% uh, and 75%, but we are looking at increase no matter what we do. Okay, and so the broker's looking at it. Will the, bro will the broker be coming in to make a presentation? That's correct. i the broker here on the next board meeting. Okay. He can go into more detail about how the rates have climbed. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're increasing the wholesale water purchases, too. So at the time I was putting this together, the Fort Worth came out with a projected preliminary rate increase at that time. They just came back with, uh, I think, a couple of days ago, last week, in the last week, with a little bit lower rate. So this will reduce a little bit. Um, but as we're starting to finalize some numbers here with me and, uh, and Chris with NewGen, you know, it comes down to what factors you use, what variables you use to, to calculate what you think the what the what you think the consumption is going to be for the year. So I plugged in the new rates on there. It will reduce a little bit than what you see in there, uh, but there is still an increase, and that has to do with an increase this year. Fort Worth uses a three-year rolling average, and if you recall, uh, 2019 being friendly on the rate side, it's going to start falling off, and we're going to get some uh, drier weather, which means a little bit higher on the rates as an average. Okay. Okay. And these are so are, are we are we I mean <coughs> do you have a number that you're using what 
where I can touch bases with you separately on what number you're using uh, as a planned water sales next year. You're so. talking about for consumption? Yep. So I do two different things. I have I, I watch the trend and watch the per connection. Uh, I take the four. The, I take the three of the last four uh, four years that we have. I do a rolling average or, or do an average in there minus the slope that I see for for, consu- for consumption there. Yeah. Um, so, but when it comes to the Fort Worth side, I am a little bit more conservative. If we were to have a drier year, when it comes to the revenue side, I'm a little more conservative. If we were to have a wetter year, okay. so I have two different averages and I have two different equations of how I got those. They're fairly close, but there's enough to give us a little buffer on both sides. Okay. Uh, I'm down in water and wastewater. Same thing on salaries and wages. Before you go down to the wastewater, sure. I just had a quick question since you're on that page uh, 58. On the travel and per diem, we had uh, budgeted like 988, 98, but there's a 30,000 in projected for travel and per diem. Where did that come from? That's a good question. Didn't know if. Looks like, an year <coughs> looks like an entry. Looks like an entry. It was a typo. Yeah, I believe that was a typo. Would you like to get an award for finding that? Or <laughs> <laughs> okay. How come you didn't catch that, Bill? Yeah. Come on, man. I was looking at the minus five percent on yeah. the far right column and said, "Well, that's great." Yeah. <laughs> we, we did mention this is a draft, right? Yeah, we <laughs> did. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, I sorry to interrupt you. Sal- salaries and wages on the wastewater treatment plant. We're going down FTEs. I mean, that's down twenty-seven percent. That's what? Yeah. Correct. That's a re- decrease in two FTEs. <clears throat> if you all recall, a uh, year and a half ago, we began the annual wastewater system evaluation program Mm -hmm. and this is the best management practices way of going out and evaluating your wastewater system we had two individuals retire and instead of backfilling those positions we're now utilizing these contracts to go out and exceed what staff was able to do in the past uh, utilizing uh, folks that do it on a daily basis and utilizing newer technology and so we're able to get it done in a shorter time frame and save the district money the good thing about this too is for some reason if there's an economical impact uh, instead of having to uh, potentially reduce staff at that time we could always reduce this contract and delay our plan out another year if we needed okay. to or however is most feasible more excellent management uh, the uh, on the page 90 I'm sorry 59 <coughs> uh, maintenance repairs wastewater treatment plant and also collections are both uh, up significantly more just just note it not address it electricity's up likewise another big number um, I'm on page 60 capital outlays uh, only show a slight increase uh, 17% we got Gasby reserve coming in so we're taking some money on a Gasby I guess uh, for some so of those items. Alan, which? I've been working on the Gasby, and we're actually going to be funding through Gasby now. Okay. Uh, now that we're getting almost fully funding the Gasby saving or reserve that we have. So that's we'll, a purpose we'll see a lot of in and out of that, correct? Yep. That's the purpose of Gasby. I'm we now have a formal Gasby formulated uh, document. So every asset that we plug into it, it's determined when that replacement's going to be. And we'll essentially, as we draw from the Gasby funds, we'll be replacing in the yes. same year. So it's, it's the uh, healthy way or recommended way of funding the GASB, and we now have it in place, and these numbers will reflect what we need to do year one. I'm glad to see it being used. Uh, and the last thing is on page 61 at the bottom line, net budget surplus or deficit. Deficit of, uh, I know this is a draft, okay? Deficit of $180,000. I don't, I don't vote for deficit budgets so and we're, we're not going to bring you a, a deficit we're bringing a month. balanced budget <laughs> yeah. okay that, thank you for your patience and time as i as i I'm gonna <laughs> see through it. you want to go ahead yeah i'm done okay steven out of curiosity on the uh final budget proposal will we have a description of the yeah. increase or decrease like we usually do sure i can do that thank you and you have any questions we plan on trying to bring that information next month yeah, I think it would just save some of the questions. Correct. Uh, going to why it increased, why it decreased, as an FTE to deduct from it. <coughs> we have it now. I just hide it so it's not yeah. overwhelming. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure the budget committee has access to it. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. But it's it's well done. <coughs> Good deal. Okay, we're moving on to consider number five. Consider an act uh, relating to changing regular monthly meeting date of the board of directors of the district. A, consider an act to adopt resolution 2022-0718A as an alpha, changing the board of directors regular monthly meeting day to the third Wednesday of the third week of each month. I think it should read the third Wednesday of each month rather than the third Wednesday of the third week. Because I'm just saying, some whoever wants to make a motion might want to consider that. B, consider and take appropriate action regarding adoption of order 2022-0718A, amending section 5.01 of the bylaws of the board of directors relating to board of directors regular monthly meeting. It's on page 73 of the packet. Thank you. <coughs> Kevin? Oh, yes. I was going to, before I make a motion, I need to understand exactly, if we can have a discussion first, understand exactly what we're talking about uh, in the description. <coughs> so uh, what we have, we're talking about the thir a third Wednesday, okay? Third Wednesday. But if, but a month starts with a Wednesday, are we going to count that? Does that Wednesday count or... I mean, if that Wednesday, first Wednesday counts, and I can make a real quick motion to change this. Yes, I, I mean that's what does. we 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 looked at it that way, didn't we? Okay, so if that's what if, I mean, if that's where we want to be, if Wednesday is the first of the month, that's the Wednesday. It counts. Okay, yeah. and so we're going to count three off it. Okay, I move to uh, adopt resolution number twenty twenty two dash zero eight one eight a and adopt order number two zero two two dash 0718A, amending each of those to say that the meeting shall be held on the third Wednesday of each month. Okay, may I correct you? I think um, you could play it back, but I think you said 0818 on A. Did I? Uh, I'll, I'll read 0718 A, 2022, resolution number 2022-0718A and order number 2022-0718A, amending those to read the meeting be to be held on the third Wednesday of each month. Does that okay, I have a motion yeah. by Director Rose for 5A and B. Do I have a second? So I'll second. I'll it's identify. a tie. Uh, Mr. Brewster, we second it. Um, any discussion? I see none. All in favor, show of hands. Okay, unanimous. Thank you very much. That, uh, but as, as a point of as a point of information, that also amends the bylaws. Correct. Yes. yes. With, with okay. second. That, that was the intent. Yep. <coughs> okay. Moving on <laughs> to agenda item six. Consider an act to adopt resolution number two zero two two dash zero seven one eight B as in boy authorizing extension of depository pledge agreement with Prosperity Bank. There's a, let's see, handout tag. Okay. Yeah, everybody should have the handout if they scroll up. Sure, I'll talk on this one. So we are up right now for renewal of Prosperity Bank or up for a depository renewal. Uh, we have an option to do a two year extension and that's what we have presented in front of you right now. And the handout shows the new rates uh, that are fresh off the press today. And Stephen, for clarity, what does Prosperity Bank hold as far as our funding? Yeah, Prosperity Bank, it's our main depository bank. So we have a uh, we have a money market there, which is our savings, and then we have a regular <coughs> Prosperity Now account, uh, which is our operating fund. It all checks every every payment that comes out comes through Prosperity as our main depository bank. Thank you. We bank at the Keller Prosperity. We actually use the one here in Roanoke, but my our, our main bank manager is in Keller, correct? The one in Roanoke's level. There is a temporary okay. building uh, okay. that's over there by, uh, I think, Fuzzies, right next to Fuzzies. Okay. Uh, just right, just across the, the road there. Yeah. Okay. Thank but you. they will be moving back eventually once they build that building. Okay. Do we have a motion for 
number six? Anyone? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution Thank number Thank you. 2022-0718B, authorizing extension of depository pledge agreement with Prosperity Bank. As stated in the handout, correct? As stated in the handout. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a motion by <coughs> Tracy, Director Hunter. Who second? Governor. <laughs> Your voice sounds like you're saying sorry. Okay, I have a second by uh, Secretary Treasurer Harper. Any discussion? I see none. All in favor, show of hands. All right, unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, seven, receive update from the audit committee members, Director Rose and Director Hunter. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we had the meeting. Uh, we met with uh, General Manager and Director of Finance uh, concerning the audit uh, services and uh, considered uh, three particular ones. We uh, considered the one who is currently under contract to do it, that group, and quickly decided that uh, we didn't want to continue with that particular group. And then that left uh, Rod. And I don't know if Stephen wants to chime in with the Isn't late. No, Garrett and Williams. Who, and uh, she was involved uh, with uh, the firm that was doing our audit last year, but in a prior year had done some services. Uh, Rod uh, Abbott, uh, President Carr may remember him. He has done uh, the auditing for <coughs> MUD for uh, several years previously, and we had moved away from him due to uh, changing auditing firms every five years. We like to do that. And so he is, he is available. Uh, we reviewed his, uh, reviewed his credentials. He has set up a firm on his own now. He was associated uh, with a, in, a, in a different firm. He's now set up his own firm and uh, one of the items of concern that we had uh, with him in particular was, as we described it, it was the classic uh, Mack truck on 114, you know, kind of single person, he may have somebody else, but basically a single person uh, firm. Not that he's incapable, quite capable of, of doing it, uh, doing the audit. Uh, so the question become, what would, what would happen if something was to happen to him and we were in the audit process? And the answer is, we have, go ahead. I need to provide you some clarification on that. If, if you Before recall, I speak. we had the understanding that there was some room for filing of extensions. Yes. So I asked Stephen to go in and yes. find a little more detail. So we've got some clarification on that. Okay. If, if you don't mind, let Please. him speak to that, Stephen. All right. So went on the water code and TCQ to look at what would happen if we were to unable, the district was unable to file an annual audit with a timely fashion. We have 135 days to submit our annual audit to TCQ. That comes mid-February. Uh, if we're unable to do it, what happens is the executive director of TCQ uh, will file with the attorney general a list of districts that did not file in time. From there, they'll send you a certified letter letting you know your failure to um, apply within the TWC uh, Chapter 49, uh, and then you could be a penalty up to $100 per day until it's filed, potentially. Uh, so there is no, there's no extension. Uh, I was mistaken, there was actually exemptions, but we do not qualify for those. So if it was to happen, then we would have to let TCQ know we would be filed that we didn't meet deadlines uh, and then from there, we would work with them on getting an auditor, a new auditor if we had to. Once again, this is worst case scenario, if something was to happen and the auditor was unable to perform the audit. Uh, he is currently looking uh, for some staff there, but with the economy the way things are, he's having difficulties finding more staff, um, but he assured us that he, this is his number one priority. He will, he's not gonna, he, he's gonna have more flexibility and, and more ability to come in and do the audit in person and get this thing done and filed in a timely manner. And obviously our goal is to have documentation for the board, for the committee, and a lot quicker than we did in the prior year. Yeah. We just want to make sure you all receive that information tonight. Since you all didn't have that before. Thank you, because I was going to the different position. Understood. <coughs> well, even, even with that information, I think I'm still comfortable proceeding with uh, this ride. 
unfortunately, one of the things that needed to be done, got your attention over here, unfortunately, well done. Uh, one of the things that needed to be done is we needed a contract from them uh, to bring it to the board. The contract, as I understand it, is Tony has it and is reviewing it. And uh, once that gets done, then we can bring it back to the board, which will probably be next meeting. So, Tony has reviewed it, and I've got the comments on there. I have Senator Miller talk to uh, the auditor. Uh, he is on vacation right now. He did everything he can to get this out as timely as he can, but he'll be back, back with me at the end of this week, and we'll touch base to get that contract update. I can I can I can rem remember him been doing the audit uh, previously, and I was happy with his work. So. But again, at that time, the only red flag I think has already been brought out that he's a one-man show. If he goes on vacation, gets COVID, sick, or whatever, uh, you're kind of at a loss. So he assured me that it would have to take a, an active, you know what, to, to have him not do our audit here. <coughs> uh, we do know things, as we say, get hit by the bus, the truck, you know, there's a capability of that. Uh, if that was to happen, then staff would do everything we can to get us another person ready to go as soon as we can. People say that, but unexpected things happen. I understand. Hospitals, heart attacks, car wrecks, things like that. That, that was our concern <laughs> also. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what, what's the feeling of the audit committee on this one? Did it go with the Rob? Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, thanks for the, anyone else have any questions for the audit committee? One comment. Uh, we likely won't discuss audit until we get through the process and, be, and get our first draft unless you all want to leave this item moving forward. No. Okay. I, we, yeah. We need there'll be a, there will be a point when the after the audit gets started that then the audit committee will come back and and uh, be involved in what's going on with the audit so i do have approval of the contract on the next meeting agenda yeah, okay okay so other than that we weren't planning on bringing an audit committee update unless you all wanted to leave it on here for some reason that i'm unaware nope. of okay thank you well any, any flags that come up needs to be brought up obviously okay. yeah um and number eight, from what I heard, was the contract is being reviewed by Tony. Is that correct? It, it's already been reviewed by Tony. His okay. comments have been sent to the contractor. And as soon as he gets that updated and sent back to us, we'll get it on the next meeting for approval, the contract itself. So number eight, uh, I'll read it. It says, consider an act regarding proposals received for annual financial audit services and select the audit firms for negotiation of a contract for audit services, which I, from what I heard has already been done. We're just waiting on the contract to come back. Is that correct? Yeah, so that correct. I don't know how, how if someone wants to make the motion. Well, no, um, I, can't, I can't move to accept a contract. I have it, to say it. Right exactly, right. but you can move to select the audit firm. Okay. And I, 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 I with the caveat that the contract is, being, is pending. Okay, I move to select the audit firm of uh, Rod L. Abbott, and uh, we'll bring the contract back to the next meeting uh, for <coughs> final approval. Is that okay with everybody? Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Oh, for a second. Okay. When you got that down, then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second by Secretary Treasurer Harper. Uh, any other discussion? I see none. All in favor? Okay, so Rod L. Abbott is going to be the audit firm pending contract. Let's come back to the next meeting. Yep. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rose and Tracy. Uh, number nine, items for future agenda. Okay, do we have anybody that wants to see something on the agenda? I'd like to add something to the agenda, please. Sure. Um, uh, for discussion, to be cc'd on emails, um, that our Alan, our general manager, sent out. Um, my thought process on this, you know, being new here to the board, I have a lot to learn. <coughs> and, you know, after I thought about it a little bit more, I was like, well, we have three new board members. So I'm thinking that would speed up the process a little bit it, with our learning curve. Um, I would like to have that added, if at all possible. Okay, uh, Tony, would this be an executive session agenda item? Well, if the board wanted legal advice or opinion, that could be done in an executive session. Otherwise, it would be a public item, but I'm ha happy to work with your staff to, to 
provide for wording so that it can be considered by the board next meeting, either in or closed session or in open se session or vote. Yeah, I'd prefer myself, I'll, I'll ask the board to go around here, but I prefer that be an executive session for us to ask any legal and to what extent of the emails. Emails to the board members is one thing, e all emails is another thing. I, I concur with your your thought on it. Mr. Brewster, you have anything? Um, yes, uh, I'd like to see a discussion about um, uh, community education and uh, what the district is all about. I like that one. Okay. Did you have any? No, no. I, I just, you your thoughts for example. <laughs> I second that. Okay, you second that? Okay. Okay, Tracy, you, you got that only one? Is that the only one you wanted? Yes. Okay. So, um, okay, so we have community. And then we have uh, Tracy's question regarding CC on emails for executive session. You got that, Laura? Yes. Okay. Moving on to agenda number 10, set future meeting dates, Wednesday, August 17th, 2022 at 630. And Tony will not be here. Is that right, Tony? You'll be in Colorado? I will be out of state, but I'm happy to participate remotely if that's helpful. Okay. Anyone have any problem with that date? No. Okay, since we don't have any executive session, do I have to read this thing? The right no. To, no. The right to read adjourn? No. Tony? No, I have to read it. Okay, thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay, it is now 7.47 and MUD 1 meeting will be adjourned. Thanks, sir. I have a question quick before Tony leaves.